Welcome back to Nick Lange's Movie Review, episode 152. Talk about this thing. Fantastic Four released in 2005. There's some problems I have with this movie. <clears throat> but before I talk about this one, I have to talk about the unreleased film. Yes. Some of you may or may not know there was a film made before this. You see, the plan was released in 1994. And the movie was made by Schlockmaster Roger Corman on a budget of one million dollars. Yes, seriously, that's how much how cheap the movie was made. And the movie looks pretty bad. And the only thing they got right in the movie was the costumes. Excuse me. That movie did care about something from this movie, from that one, was that Doctor Doom was involved with the backstory of how they got their powers. Even though, no, he wasn't. That was completely made up for the damn movie. Now, in this movie, <clears throat> we have Jessica Alba playing Sue Storm. We have future Captain America Chris Evans. We also have Ian McDermott. I think it's supposed to guy's name because this guy is Ian McGruffet. Yeah, the thing with this, at this movie which came out, he's not known much for anything. Not really, no. In pop culture, he's generally referred to as the very first, <clears throat> like, re Richards in live action release in theaters. And the thing is played by Michael Chiklis, the star of the series The Shield. It was a police show. I'd never watched it first day, but when I read about it, he played a crooked cop in the show who has his own way of doing just serving out justice to criminals. And the show lasted about six years. And one season, his captain was played by Glenn Close. Yes, Glenn Close. And apparently, they were planning to have sexual chemistry between the two of them, despite the fact that Glenn Close is older now than she was back then. Well, back in, let's say, the 80s, when she was actually very lovely. <clears throat> but I'm not here to talk about that. This movie also has live action debut, not only the Fantastic Four themselves, but also Doctor Doom, <clears throat> made by Julian McMahon. Who is not related to Vince McMahon. Nope, completely unrelated. And we also had a live action debuts of two of the people. Alicia Masters, played by Kathy. I think her name is... Uh, Carrie Washington. Now, this Alicia Masters is black. Now, the thing is... The Fantastic Four have never had Alicia Masters live action before. Well, for Founding Four, plus for Rich, for Peach, live action for Doc Doom. But Leash Masters? No, Leash Masters has always been white over the years. Heck, currently in the comics, still white. And they did use this aspect of Leash Masters for the very terribly looking Fantastic Four series, Fantastic Four World's Greatest Heroes. Excuse me, that cartoon series. <clears throat> Though, aside from the skin change, they keep everything else right about the, the woman. The fact she follows up Ben Grimm. She's a sculptor, and she's blind. Yep. Aside from the skin, like, like I said, the skin of Sin Chains, it's a complete, accurate representation of Alicia Masters. Yep. Now, how'd they get their powers? Oh, boy. So, in this movie, uh, a not Doctor Doom, well, not Doctor Doom just yet, despite the fact when Doctor Doom first counted the Fantastic Four, it was after they got their powers. In this movie and the Roger Core movie, they actually met before they got their powers. Now, I get basically Ben Grimm and Reed Richards know who Doc Doom is. But thing is, the Storm siblings never met him before this. Not in the comics. You see, in the comic books... <clears throat> oh, one other thing. The, the other live action appearance is Willie Lumpkin. The mailman who works for the Fantastic Four. And he's played by his creator, Stan the Man Lee. Yep. Which, that's a very memorable cameo. Now, in this movie, Doctor Doom owns a company. Yes, he owns a business. Which is not what he does in the comics. That is something they completely made of the movie. The way Julian McMahon plays his character, it's almost like he's this universe version of Lex Luthor. Very much, very 
like the way he portrays it's very much like it's Lex Luthor light, like the business suit, the fact he finances the team in a way, even though he's got sinister motives. And here is something interesting though. Apparently, Reed and Sue did date prior to this, but they're not a couple. Nope, they don't come couple in the movie. Yeah, and also this movie, apparently Sue is dating Victor Von Doom. I'm like, really? Also, yeah, and and also <clears throat> Johnny Storm is like the big face for the team, which I'm like, okay, that makes no sense. And he tends to act like he's the leader, even though the leader is really Reed Richards. They even point this out later in the movie. No, kid, you're not the leader. He is. Because he's a genius. <laughs> yep. Now, I do at least appreciate, though, Reed Richards is still portrayed like a genius, like he is in the comics. <clears throat> so, they go to space. And it's not immediately what they counter cosmic rays. Also, Victor Von Doom is with them. Like, really? Why is he there for? I mean, as the investor, he does not necessarily need to go with them. Also, they go to his freaking space station. Which... No. They never went there in the comic. There was no space station in orbit. If you read the original Fantastic Four issue, there was no space station in orbit. Also, he was a freaking rocket in the comic, so it was the 60s. Excuse me, here, it's a... I think it's a space shuttle. And then they have Ben Grimm, who's a pilot, which kudos to the fact to keep the fact he's the pilot. And he goes he goes basically goes to spacewalk. And then he gets hit by the cosmic rays, along with this, all these radiation shields. And every gets their powers, and somehow mysteriously they get back to Earth. In the movie, it's never explained how they get back to Earth after the space is hit by the cosmic rays. So Ree gets his basically a stretching ability, Sue so goes invisible. The Human Torch basically does a funny thing where, like, he, he's, he gives his temper shake and, and the nurse says, You're hot! He says, Thank you! <laughs> and he puts a temperature in her pocket. <laughs> that was so funny. And he takes Nurse with him to go skiing. And then he sends, and he, he basically bursts into flames and takes her coat. And, of course, the joke was basically, Oh, yeah, future wife. No, he never married. So I thought that was so hilarious. <clears throat> Because Johnny Storm was a playboy. And at least pretty sure Chris Evans played up that role in the movie. And he's a risk taker too. And of course, Reed tends to reconnect with Sue. And then he's like... She's like, why are you looking at me so weird? Sue, you, I'm seeing right through you. <laughs> yep. They also do this thing later on where... She tends to go invisible, but apparently her clothes are invisible. They later fix this lady with the unstable molecules. And she had to strip naked in front of everybody while she's invisible. Yep. <laughs> yep, so Ben Grimm basically runs away, though he ends up basically causing a near disaster on a bridge, though they appear to become heroes anyways. Though he first tries to stop a guy committing suicide. Now this is a partial nod to something that happened in the comic books where there was an attempt to suicide off a bridge. Mainly this happened in the debut of the Puppet Master, which he is nowhere to be seen in this movie. Yes, Philip Masters is nowhere to be seen in this movie. Because Doc Doom is the only villain who appears here, despite the fact there's a ton of villains they could use until Doc Doom was ready to go. By the way, they actually have this happen to Doc Doom in the movie where his face starts breaking out. Oh, yeah, and he puts in the suit, which actually is not a bad looking suit. I at least got praise the costume department for that and the costumes for the Fantastic Four. It's blue. They mention us in molecules. Kudos. And. They're based on the Baxter Bullet, which, good job. That's very good. Okay, and then they run into Limkin, which in the novelization of this movie, he actually talk, tries to talk to him a couple times. First time, basically, he says, hi, hi Mr. Richards. And, and then in the movie, he basically he does it twice. Because first time, he didn't think they heard him. In the movie, he does it once, and that's it. I know because I read the novelization of this movie. So, and there's a joke about Ben Grimm's weight, and he says, and he's like, we hit the weight limit for the elevator. It's like, he's like, fine, I'll take the stairs. And they get there to the, to the actual lab. Now, in the movie, now, they do keep the fact that Ray Richards does own the Baxter building, which he technically does do in the comic books. 
But not originally, no. It was owned by somebody else. They later bought it from the original owner. Which, in case you're curious though, where the name Baxman came from. As far as I can tell in the in the comic books, now the second back now the name itself comes from an old professor of Reed Richards, whose name was Baxter, and there have technically been two Baxter buildings. The original one debuted back in Fantastic Four number three, though it was destroyed back in the eighties by George Perez. They later brought back the Fantastic Four main headquarters Baxter building in around the early two thousands. Well, for a decade, their headquarters was the Four Freedoms Plaza, which I love that place. It's actually over 100 stories tall. And in the movie, apparently, the Bax building, I think, is supposed to take place of a different building in New York. I'm not sure which one it is. So, they show off his lab, which, when it gets to the actual, like, main portion where Tesla headquarters is, which, yeah, I can kind of believe that is actually where he and Ben Grimm lives. Which, that's interesting, though, because, now, the thing is, when the Fantastic Four first moved into the back it was after they already established the team. Though, at the time, that was when they first introduced their uniforms that were basically enough wearing the blue spandex suits, which are basically made of steel molecules. Also in the movie, let me show you closely basically where they put the symbol. They put the symbol not in the middle of the chest like in the comic books. It's basically off the side. Excuse me. Okay, that's that's fine. They did the same thing for Daredevil. In 2003, I think it was, when the movie came out. Actually, it was 2003 when came out, yes. So, it, in the movie, it's explained this is actually... <laughs> it was... And our human torch shows us off. And, and Sue was like, what did he do with the outfit? And then we see, <laughs> apparently, Reed Richards is like... Oh, just show like, okay. <laughs> yeah, it was all his... He, he has it, too, which I thought was so funny. And they shows us the code names, like... Oh, Human Torch, Mr. Fantastic... Invisible Girl, which Sue does not like that nickname at all. He, she actually doesn't like it at all. Though, at the time, when she made her debut, that was the original code name before it changed into Invisible Woman in the 80s. And like, well, what, what's, what is that thing? Oh yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> that made really, made Grimm so mad. So when Johnny Storm came back in his red fancy sports car, I thought this was so hilarious. Like, they even kept the same gags in the comics, which I thought was so hilarious. Like, oh, let's have Johnny Storm put some shaving cream into Ben Grimm's head. Well, he's like, hands like this, like, why in the world? <laughs> he smacks his face, which I thought was so funny. <laughs> yep. And then to basically just, okay, don't hit him. But, okay, Susan, don't fight. He's like, okay. So, off screen, he proceeds to pick up the car and turn it into a soccer ball. <laughs> Which, okay, that was funny. <laughs> okay, yeah, that was so hilarious. I appreciate that they actually kept the gags. Which, yeah, that was something that was common for Stan Lee's era. Where there was always gags, basically, where... Human Torch tends to basically poke fun at Ben Grimm. Like, there was actually one time he actually put two spe like three speakers next to Ben Grimm's, like, bed. And <laughs> he just basically all out at the same time. Or oh, he took a shave from his face, which I was so funny. And, of course, Reed tends to basically put a cure for the power. It's not exactly work. And then we see Doctor Wee slowly turn into himself. And then he goes freaking nuts in New York City. Where the Fantastic Four basically work together. At one point, you see Michael Chiklis, well, the Ben Grimm briefly cured to be the thing. Then he goes back to normal. And also, he puts on a pair of pants. Because in the movie, he just wears regular street clothes. Like, even the even the trench coat, which he wears in the comics as well, in order to hide who he is. Even the brown hat. Which, this is how he meets Alicia Masters. He meets her in a bar of all places, yes. And apparently, she's got no problem with him basically being a rock man. Yeah, no problem at all. So, <clears throat> and he does put on the outfit. Now, he does put on the, the big jumpsuit that basically everybody else wears. He puts on the pants, and he puts the four symbol on his belt, which, yeah, he does do in the comics around this period of time, so kudos for the movie got, getting that part right. And then after he's turned into a statue, he's later returned to Latveria, they mentioned in the movie, and he goes on a ship and goes straight to Latveria, and... Then we also have Repose and Sue, and that's the movie ends. Aside from the stupid backstory related to this Forgot the Powers, this is a pretty fun movie to watch and a good start for it's a good start for this Doxology movies. Though 
I know people have other problems with like the fact that oh, let's let the superheroes be really lazy. Yep. Also, and I at least appreciate him towards you. See this little force symbol? Yeah, he does in the comics as well. Yep. But not much else to say about this movie. It's good, but it has its problems. It's not all that terrible per se. But I can't say the same thing for Rise of a Surf, which came two years later. We shall discuss that in episode 153. Okay, see you next video. Bye.